Will artificially intelligent machines make us obsolete? There's this pervasive idea right now that smart machines are just about to overtake us, that robots are going to completely fill the factories, smart machines are going to replace everyone, uh, and that we're sort of at the beginning of this worldwide technological unemployment. In fact, there are experts that say within 50 years, half the jobs on the planet will be filled by machines. Well, is this true? I mean, everybody's saying this, but do we have any reason to fear? I don't think so. I actually think that this, this prediction is more metaphysics than, than it is economics. I mean, if you assume from the beginning that human beings are just machines, then it would make sense that we're going to eventually build machines that exceed us. But if you don't grant that assumption, there's no reason to come to that conclusion. If, in fact, man is not a machine, man is a maker of machines, then there are always going to be differences between what we are as persons, persons made in the image of the creative God, and the machines that we make. So I think a much better prediction to make is that machines are going to do a heck of a lot of things that we thought only we could do. But in the next 20 or 30 years, what we will discover is the fundamental differences between man and machine. Our machines will take over a lot of the work we were doing, and that will free us up to do only the things that human beings can do. What is the premise of your book, The Human Advantage? The premise of my book is that the materialist assumption about economics and technology is wrong. The, the idea of top currency right now is that human beings are just machines, and so all of our smart machines and computers and robots are going to eventually replace us and displace us and leave us either with nothing to do so we can have fun or with nothing to do and it's going to be very depressing. But notice in both cases, the assumption is that machines will replace us. Well, I think that prediction is based almost entirely on this metaphysical pre-commitment that human beings are just machines. And if that's true, then probably yeah, our machines would eventually replace us. If human beings are something fundamentally different than machines, though, there's no reason to assume that. What I think is much more likely to happen is that we will create many machines that do many amazing things that we might have thought we could only do, but that that will leave us this residual human advantage, those things that make us uniquely human. And what we'll be able to do uh, in the near future is to focus on our comparative advantage as persons rather than machines. How does the materialist worldview influence technology? Materialism misleads people, not just in physics and in biology and, and fields like that, but actually in economics and technology as well. There's this pervasive idea in uh, technological literature that we are just a simply, simply uh, machines ourselves, that we're complex machines. We have hardware, which are bodies, and our software is our brains or mental patterns or something like that. And then we build other machines. This is where a lot of the kind of sci-fi sensation about strong artificial intelligence comes from. The assumption is that, well, we're complex computers made of meat, and so we're going to create the same sorts of things, and they'll eventually, or maybe even quite soon, surpass us and replace us. But notice that's a heck of a lot of me metaphysics doing a heck of a lot of work. This isn't just a dispassionate analysis of the nature of technology. It's really applied materialism. It says man is a machine, we're nothing but a computer made of meat. We're going to make more advanced and sophisticated and durable machines, and those are going to replace us. That's, that's not an argument that sets up a tentative hypothesis. That's essentially a deduction from a materialist worldview. And unfortunately, there's way too much materialist deduction taking place in the artificial intelligence and uh, technology literature at the moment, unfortunately. Your book explores the idea of an information economy. What do you mean by that? We do live at a remarkable time in human history. I mean, we've been at inflection points before from the transition from hunter-gatherer to the agrarian stage and from the agrarian to the industrial stage. We're now way past that and we're into this, the information stage in which the kind of fundamental reality of our economy is determined by information itself. And so information technology, we should expect, is going to do some radical things that previous forms of technology could not do. Well, that's exciting. And I think that, yeah, there are going to be costs to that, especially in terms of disruption, but there are also huge opportunities involved. And so I think what we want to do is try to take a dispassionate understanding of what that is. What are the real properties? What's the nature of the information economy? And then how do we adapt to it? 
That's the right question. Unfortunately, uh, there's way too much bad materialist metaphysics in the discussion, in which are just sort of assumptions that, well, technology is, you know, succeeding our wildest expectations. It's accelerating beyond our ability to uh, get control of it. And we're about to reach this singularity when our technology will ultimately displace us and sort of run out ahead of us. I think this is fundamentally a delusion because of course information technology, what, what, what is the nature of information? Well, information is actually about minds and purposes and meanings. Anytime you're talking about robust information, you're talking about a structure or a sequence that's meaningful. Uh, the information economy is not built on the backs of millions of monkeys typing randomly at typewriters. It's built on human beings engaging their intellect to build machines that in some ways mimic our own intelligence. So if anything, an information economy ought to be more human-centered. It ought to be more open to human input rather than literally replacing us. Um, we actually previously had economies. The agrarian economy was an economy that was based mainly on the labor of animals. And then more and more in the industrial economy, the labor of human beings. We're now in an economic reality in which it's our minds, it's our ideas, it's our ingenuity and invention. Those are the, that's the fundamental currency of the information economy. And so, so far from d demonstrating this materialist metaphysic, I think if anything, it completely upends it. Some believe computers will become conscious. What is their evidence for this? So the assumption is that once computers get fast enough or complex enough, they pass over into consciousness. But there's, there's no argument there. I mean, it's like saying that once a cow or an ox gets big and strong enough, it becomes a tractor. I mean, what's the argument? Yeah, you can do it, get a, an ox and it can do certain things like a tractor, but it's no argument that one is gonna become a tractor in the same way um, humans might do computations in our mind, and we might be able to build machines that do computation, but there's no argument that says, well, once computation gets fast enough, it becomes conscious. It just doesn't make any sense, and it certainly doesn't square with anything that we know about computers. We know about consciousness because we know about ourselves. But assuming, without evidence, that we ourselves are computers, that's, that's not evidence. That's an assumption. What's behind this idea that we must merge with AI or get left in the dust? There's this popular idea in the so-called strong artificial intelligence community. Uh, first of all, that we ourselves are computers. We're just fancy computers that have evolved by blind forces. We've got hardware is our mushy bodies and the software is our brain or the patterns in our brain. And now we're building more and more sophisticated computers. And so if you assume we're computers, then you're gonna imagine that, well, we'll eventually build computers that are not only equal to us, but greater than us. And in fact, so great, the best thing we'll be to do will be to uh, leave behind this mortal coil, coil and upload ourselves into some more robust hardware. And there are a lot of people that think this. this is a very popular idea, especially in California, of course. Um, but there's really no reason beyond the materialist superstition to believe this. It's only if you already believe for some other reason that we're just computers would you ever imagine that any of these sorts of things is going to make sense. I would predict no. Um, the nice thing is it's a risky prediction. If the strong artificial intelligence people are right, if the singularitarians are right, we'll know within 30 years, because that's the date they've placed on a lot of these events happening. Are only religious people skeptical of strong AI? I don't think you have to have a religious premise to say that strong artificial intelligence is misguided. Um, if consciousness and computation are not identical, or if computation isn't sort of pre-consciousness, then the strong artificial intelligence program in which we can replicate ourselves, we either can create conscious machines or we ourselves as conscious beings can upload ourselves to machines, has no chance of happening. Look, these are just two different things. Uh, the philosopher John Searle has, has pointed out over and over again that co computers and machines work at the level of a syntax. They work at the level of rules that can be manipulated. Agents, intelligent persons, we work at the level of semantics, at the level of meaning. And so we understand what the symbols mean, what they entail. The machines don't, they're simply manipulating them. Software is software because we've programmed it to do particular things. Even Google, which is the most amazing kind of soft artificial intelligence that all of us encounter every day, is only intelligent because first of all, the original algorithm was designed by Sergey Brin and Larry Page. 
And then it's constantly getting the interaction and input of hundreds of millions of intelligent agents teaching the algorithm what makes sense. And so don't think of the Google alg algorithm as some kind of intelligent machine. It's a very smart algorithm built into a network and then connected to a bunch of intelligent agents, namely human beings. But ultimately, the debate over artificial intelligence, the debate about conscious machines is gonna come down to this, this philosophical question. Is man a machine or is man something beyond a machine? That's really the fundamental question.